Hark! Look for a brush. Is that ye old fat boy come back with stories from yonder? Howdy, partners. <laughs> oh, it's Reg, the big homie and your friend. And it one more again, trying to find a new way to win. How y'all doing tonight, hmm? Me? I'm aces. Just trying to stay in God's graces. Maybe put some smiles on y'all faces. But y'all don't hear me, though, do you? <laughs> Man, I'm just happy to be back. Hey, the first thing I want to do is thank God that none of the tumors they removed had any traces of cancer. And I smoke cigarettes, man. So, I got to put that on the big guy up there. I, 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 I can't even argue with that one. Because even the doctors was like, man, we shocked it wasn't cancer. Yeah, well, be feet, punk, because it ain't. <laughs> Oh, and I, and I got the pododo dodo back. So, you know, and it's healing, it's getting better. So I'm just happy to be able to do the one thing that I still love to do. And that's talk to y'all. I don't care how many of y'all hear it. I just want somebody to hear it. <laughs> anyway, let's get to business. Yeah. This story is about. Okay, wait a minute. I almost called him my own boy. I, I can't do that. This is a gentleman that I crossed paths with back in the 90s. His name is Joe Sun. He's a Korean dude, man. Mixed martial artist. He's a fighting bastard, too, man. I, I, I got to give it to him. In the streets and in the nightclubs. I seen him do some work. And... This dude sings R&B and soul like he was raised in a South Carolina small backwood Baptist church. To hear what comes out of his mouth is crazy. But all that being said, when you hear what this dude did, none of that even matters. So, without further ado, oh, see, I'm, I'm fresh back. I got to hit y'all with the disclaimer. So, look, here it goes. Whenever you watch a movie with me or a video or anything with me, there's a few things that's going to happen. I'm a pause, I'm a laugh, I'm a crack jokes, I'm a ask questions that ain't nobody here to even answer. I'm a chill out, I'm an act of fool, I'm gonna do everything that makes you wanna go to the manager at the movies and get this typical Negro thrown out. But the problem with that is, I am the management and I do own the theater. So, either buckle up or kick rocks, because we about to go into the way out insane story of a cat I know named Joe Sun, the R&B mixed martial artist. <laughs> I do comedy, play bad guys sometimes. Um, I don't really have a Yeah, he, he he played a big part in Austin Powers, man. He was uh he was one million dollars homeboy. Oh, the, the, man, you you remember? He was getting that old girl with it though. This fool said that's bad. Despite the weather and general lack of snow, Christmas in Huntington Beach. 
Hey, I gotta cut in, man. That's how HB look, man. Oh, man, I had some good times there. California is a lot like Christmas in the rest of the country. People celebrate, gather with loved ones, and observe traditional Christmas customs. Amongst those excited for the holidays was a 19-year-old woman only known by the alias Victoria. She looked typical for back then, back in 1990, in the early 90s. Honey, the beach had a heavy punk, like, punk rock uh underground scene man it was crazy but it was fun man it introduced me to a lot of new stuff on december 23rd 1990 victoria and some friends had been out to admire the christmas lights adorning much of the city along for the ride was chassis victoria's small pomeranian puppy victoria arrived home at her apartment complex around 12 30 a.m and immediately noticed that the normally locked front gate to the complex was wide open additionally the light above her assigned carport was flickering on and off but most disturbingly victoria had the unmistakable feeling that she was being watched as victoria lies. parked her car she began hearing footsteps that sounded as though someone was coming through the gate it was blisteringly cold that night so victoria put her dog snugly into her coat and began walking towards the apartment entrance but as she did so she saw what looked like a shadow on the sidewalk that quickly disappeared that's what sucks man and i hate to say this man young ladies should never go home that late at night by themselves to never man I Oh man, that sucks. Then immediately afterwards, a man appeared from out of nowhere on the path and began to quickly walk towards Victoria, shouting that he was lost and needed directions to the beach. Jesus As God, the man God, got God, closer, a second man with a cigarette in his hand appeared from behind. When the second man flicked his cigarette away, both attacked Victoria from the front and back. As Victoria was on the ground, the second man pulled out a gun with a silencer attached to it and Damn. said, quote, Bitch, you're gonna die tonight. I'm gonna throw you off the cliffs. As the two men began to drag Victoria away, her puppy, who was still in her coat pocket, bit the hand of the man Hell with the gun. Yeah. As he screamed out in pain, Victoria began to run away, but was unfortunately caught at the last second when one of the men was able to grab a handful of her hair. It's them damn sh stripper shoes, man. The two then began to beat Victoria on the sidewalk when one of them asked Victoria a question. Do you see that? As he showed her that the other man had his gun pointed at the windows of Victoria's neighbors in the apartment complex. The man then said, The first one that hears you is gonna get their head blown off and you're gonna watch, so it's your choice. I was about a year younger than her when this happened, that's crazy. They then knocked Victoria out and threw her into their nearby vehicle and drove off. The two men then spent the next several hours driving around the city as they both repeatedly tortured and raped Victoria. As the man who seemed to be the leader kept repeating, I needed a beach girl for my Christmas present to myself. As the men drove around the city claiming they were looking for cliffs, Victoria remembered that in her wallet she had a picture of a friend's yeah. newborn baby. Stay thinking, Victoria. You a smart young lady. <sighs> that probably saved your life. Thinking fast, she showed the men the picture and told them that they were going to let her live so she could see her son again. To which the leader replied, You really think I'm going to let you go after you've identified me? <clears throat> Victoria answered, You poked my eyes out with contacts in them. I can't see. Ooh, I bet that hurt. See shit right now. A long moment of silence followed, with both men considering their options. But unfortunately, from that point, the torture would only get worse, as the leader then decided to violate Victoria with the barrel of his gun. 
as he claimed it had always been a fantasy of his to do so. He then stopped the car and threw a naked Victoria out onto the side of the road. Damn. He pointed his gun at Victoria's head, but then at the last moment, the other man threw his jacket onto Victoria. Wow, the leader God. was enraged and shouted, What the fuck are you doing, man? To which he replied, Come on, man, she's cold. The leader then pointed his gun at Victoria again and began counting. One, two, Merry Christmas, it's your lucky day, run. Wow. Victoria then ran to a nearby house whose occupants immediately phoned police upon hearing her story. Police arrived soon after and decided to take Victoria to the hospital, but she- She survived that shit. That's a strong lady, man. That's a strong young lady. He convinced them to first take her back to the scene of her abduction so she could look for her puppy. That's as right. they arrived, police started their investigation as Victoria began frantically searching the area and calling out her dog's name, but was unable to find her. Thinking that she died during the struggle, Victoria began to cry, but then a loud whining noise started to come from a nearby bush and Hell from there yeah. emerged Chassie the Pomeranian. Victoria right. was so jubilant that even some of the nearby police officers began crying at the hospital. Easy, he told them, real niggas don't die. <laughs> Victoria was able to provide investigators with a detailed description of the appearance of both suspects, which was quickly given out to local media. Two like unidentified me. male DNA samples were also recovered, but unfortunately, they didn't match any other DNA samples on file. But despite this, police were initially optimistic that this crime would be solved quickly, as they believed the two perpetrators had made a critical mistake. And that was repeatedly telling Victoria that they were members of a local street gang known as the Sons of Samoa. Further credence to this claim was added due to the fact that during the attack, the letters SOS had been carved onto Victoria's back end. Police immediately pursued this lead, and for over a year, they monitored the gang's members and had informants feeding them information on the gang's activities. But this lead would ultimately prove to be a dead end, with detectives coming to the conclusion that this was nothing but a lie designed to mislead investigators. And with the- I figured that, because SOS, man. Your son wasn't, son wasn't from no SOS, like, I hell no. Nah. And, uh, he, it was a lot of Samoans around where we were, but most of them were from the tribe, and, um, they all from Westside Piru. So he knew what he was doing. He sent, he sent, uh, he said the police on Space Ghost Run. That the case went cold. Police had no witnesses, no fingerprints, and no surveillance recordings. All they knew for certain was that one of the attackers was a Hispanic male, while the other was a heavy set Asian male. 18 long years would pass before police would have another lead in the case, and during that time, Damn. both of the attackers would move on with their lives as if nothing had happened. Question, would that be considered a blessing? Not from our point of view, but from his or from theirs. Or would it just be a coincidence? You can't pick and choose miracles and coincidences. Which one is it? Think about it. One of these men would eventually be identified as Joe Sun, who just four years after leading the attack on Victoria would make his Damn, mixed martial Joe, arts fighting debut on pay-per-view at UFC 4, where he was billed as a black belt in Taekwondo, as well as the founder of a new martial art he had created, yeah, which he had ingeniously Ooh, named Joe Sun Do. 
Despite being just 5 feet and 4 inches tall, Sun weighed in at 240 pounds. He made easy look like me height-wise, but boy, he was big all net. He, uh, I seen him knock fools to walls. And he was pitted against a fighter named Keith <coughs> Hacking, who had notably beaten a 600-pound sumo wrestler I at a previous that. UFC event. The fight between Sun and Hackney would go down in infamy due to a segment where Sun had a guillotine choke locked in, to which Hackney responded with a flurry of multiple punches to Sun's groin, which caused him to release the chokehold. That shit was legal back then. I wonder if the punches to, to the to the sock puppet was <laughs> was a wee bit of uh, karma. <laughs> My homeboy, let me make this real quick. My homeboy, Devin Wright, Big D, swole up. He wound up getting a trainer, man, and he got put into one of the prelims that would lead to him getting to the TV fight in the UFC. So it was like a three fight training camp for a three week training camp for this fool and i'm like d you yeah i didn't see d break fool's face but d can't fight d just can bench press 700 pounds and dance like mc hammer but he can't fight and i was i was like dog how you gonna go in there with the fools they put him in there with the wrestler dan savage then or one of them fools like that they beat his ass. I'm gonna tell you more about that story though. That's a whole story in itself. <laughs> that is brutal. Sun would eventually lose the fight by submission. The next year, Sun tried his hand at kickboxing, where he was again defeated, this time by being knocked out after a single kick to the head. From there, Sun tried to become an actor, he starring in that. many obscure, low-budget movies such as Joshua Tree, Blood Fist 5, Human Target, and Bad Blood. I've been looking forward to this. Now, don't underestimate him. He's dangerous. He's a driver. <laughs> I'm different. The only real success Sun would find in his acting career would come in 1997, when he was cast in the first Austin Powers film as Random Task, a parody of the character Oddjob from the James Bond movie Goldfinger. Despite appearing in many scenes and playing a prominent role in the film, Sun's acting career would come to an end, and Random Task would prove to be his last on-screen role, and Sun would fail into obscurity until he returned to MMA in 2002 where he participated in three final fights. In his first fight he infamously came to the ring wearing eye makeup, a bowler hat, and a tight leopard print thong. He then gave his opponent a big hug before the fight began. That's the damn drugs man. But unfortunately for the creator of Joe Sundo, his return bout was short as not long into the fight, he voluntarily quit after his opponent took him down and he almost slid out of the ring, which Sun claimed caused him to injure his elbow. Sun's next fight was an even more pathetic display, as when his opponent landed a blow that caused Sun to start bleeding, he quit the fight on the spot, giving Fuck him the embarrassing this. distinction as being the Fuck. only MMA <laughs> fighter in history to have a loss recorded as quote, submission due to terror on <laughs> He had submission due to terror. Terror. Tear her like George Bush. Tear her. <laughs> Their record. Sun would participate in his last MMA fight in July 2002, in which he again quit early after he was thrown onto his head by his opponent. In the end, Sun's official MMA record stands at zero wins and four losses, while his kickboxing record stands at zero wins and one loss. At this point, Sun retired from professional fighting altogether and moved back to California 
California and lived a relatively quiet life. During this whole time, he was never once considered a suspect in Victoria's attack, and he likely would have gotten away with it had it not been for an incident in May 2008 when he was arrested for felony vandalism after kicking in the car door of a former roommate. Sun was sentenced to 60 days in jail, which he served and was released on probation. In August of that year, Sun was again taken into police custody and sentenced to an additional 90 days in jail, after he violated the terms of his probation for failing to keep authorities updated on his current residence. As part of his plea deal, Sun was required to provide a DNA sample which in early October of 2008 was linked to the attack on Victoria. Despite the overwhelming evidence, Joe Sun continued to plead his innocence, but the DNA evidence was indisputable, so police charged Sun with 17 felony sexual offenses, which- See, that's the point I was making. So, if how he got away with it for 18 years was a blessing, Then for the other people was how he got caught 18 years later. A blessing for them. But when he got off, whether he was good or bad, it was a coincidence, right? Or was or did he catch a blessing? Life is complex. Think about it. Carried a maximum penalty of 275 years in prison. The case was handed off to a new deputy district attorney named Eric Scarborough, who was so new that at this point he had been on the job for a little over half an hour. With Man. Sun behind bars, police began the hunt for his partner by putting out a bulletin to local media with Sun's mugshot alongside the sketch of the still I unidentified accomplice. Too. A couple of days passed before a man who wished to remain anonymous emailed police. He told them that he knew nothing of the crime, but went to school with Joe's son and thought the sketch looked a lot like one of Sun's high school friends, but unfortunately he didn't remember the man's name. Police then spent months investigating Sun's known high school associates and eliminating potential suspects using the DNA they had on file. They also compiled a profile based upon what they already knew of the suspect. Eventually, it was determined that the profile matched a man by the name of Santiago Lopez Gaetan. Two Huntington Beach Damn. detectives then set up surveillance outside Gaetan's apartment complex, and within like, nah. 30 minutes of arriving, they saw Gaetan drinking from a bottle of sun-kissed soda before disposing <laughs> of it in the trash. As soon as Gaetan <laughs> walked back into his apartment, the detectives immediately took the bottle and put it in an evidence bag. The bottle was then taken back to police headquarters and Gaetan's saliva was then compared to the DNA they had on file from the 1990 attack, and it turned out to be a complete match. Bingo. Gaetan was immediately arrested, and police discovered that not long after Victoria's attack, Gaetan had moved from California to San Antonio, Texas, where he had gotten married and had children, he seemingly like pretending as if nothing killer. had happened. With both men now behind bars, DA Scarborough made a shocking discovery. It had taken police so long to identify and charge both men that the statute of limitations on rape and kidnapping what? had expired, meaning that there was a very real possibility that despite the inarguable evidence, both Sun and Gaetan could be released from jail and get away with their crimes scot-free. But they playing tennis with the blessings, huh? Scarborough refused to accept this and spent an entire weekend reading over the entire case file and wow, eventually he, he came up with the idea to charge Sun and Gaetan with torture. 
Since torture carries the possibility of life in prison, there is no statute of limitations in California. This fear of potentially being sentenced to life in prison if the case were to go to trial convinced Gaetan and his attorney to work out a plea deal. Where I said convinced him. Uh, uh, yeah, uh. Um, yeah, say, say less. I mean, <laughs> Gaetan would admit full responsibility for his actions, and in exchange, he was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Sun, however, continued to proclaim his innocence, and so a trial by jury was ordered. Which so he didn't snitch, huh? Oh, wow. I thought old boy snitched. They said he didn't. They said he just, um, told on himself. Damn, that's crazy which began three years later in 2011. Victoria testified against Sun and spoke to the court about Sun's actions that night as well as the lasting trauma that has haunted her ever since, saying, quote, The post-traumatic stress disorder is with me daily as I have triggers that set me off. I feel debilitating fear come over me and am convinced a hand is coming from behind again. My emotional scars are intense. My 20s were stripped away from my life as I relearned poor how to thing. walk, poor, see, poor hear, and cope with the outside world again. Joseph's son not only cost me my job at my salon, but also my college savings, not to mention the impact it's made on celebrating Christmas year after year. Son chose not to testify in his own defense, but had repeated outbursts during the trial screaming, that's a lie, or you made that up, when evidence against him was presented. Ul I have a question. Is he mentally ill? He lived 18 years without really getting in trouble, all of that. But in order to do what he did, isn't there some kind of warp in his brain? And then to be able to live with it like it didn't happen? I think anybody that do heinous crimes like that gotta be mentally ill. Just to even think about it. It should be automatic. People that do the things, the bad things to kids and babies and how can they not be? I understand somebody stealing or something like that or accidental shooting but people that do heinous crimes gotta be mentally ill automatically ultimately the jury deliberated for only a couple of hours before finding joe's son guilty and sentencing him to seven years to life in prison what? this meant that theoretically joe's son could be paroled and a free man in as little as seven years he he could have paroled in seven years and I got sentenced to six years for <laughs> employ employing a minor that was already out there selling dope. Imagine that. But just one month into his sentence, prison guards rushed to his cell after hearing a commotion. Upon entering the cell, they found Sun standing beside the door and his cellmate Michael Graham lying unresponsive on the bottom bunk with multiple marks and bruises on his face. Damn. Sun reportedly told the guards, quote, I told you I needed to get out of here before Shit. nonchalantly going to wash his hands. I told y'all I needed to get out of here after he murked his cell. Damn, Joe. Graham was rushed to the hospital but died just an hour later, with the cause of death being determined as blunt force trauma due to punches and kicks. Son was basically smashed in head due to two hands and feet was convicted of manslaughter and was given an additional 27 <coughs> years, meaning that he will now have to serve 34 years in prison before being eligible for parole. Wow. What do you say? I actually know this dude. And I had no idea about none of this. I, my gut didn't tell me. I didn't have no intuition. 
I hung out with this dude, had drinks, had dinner, all kind of stuff. And dude had done that. That's why I always tell my family, be careful. Because you never know who it is until after it happens. So we finna wrap this up, but I wanna say rest in peace to my close friend DJ Sparkle. Did most of the production for Tweety Birdlow and on the original Bloods and Crips album, Banging on Wax. And he just a hell of a dude and I love him and I'ma miss him. And also to my brother from Click, from Rider Click, receive your dreams always. No Rider, Brett James, the K-N-O Rider, because he was the one that always kicked the game to click. He was my conscience. I didn't always listen, but he never stopped telling me. And I'm going to miss you, dog. Fuck cancer. I mean it. So now, y'all, remember this. If you know, then you know. If you don't know, ask me. Because fat boy be known. And one thing that will never change. We all neighbors. Peace. Speeders, I'm going home.